Well done. Oh my word. No. It's a it's a constant thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Awesome. Okay, I think he feels welcome. I think he feels welcome. Cool. That that's what we're gonna do. Yes, I'm yes, I'm doing the session, but today is not about of us. active and living God. God that I serve is a God of signs, wonders, and miracles. It's a God that takes your pain like last night in a moment like this because He cares so much about you. And that's how alive and well He is. The difference between us and anybody else is that our God stood up when He, when he, when he, was, when he was crucified. He rose again after three days. And that is the victory that we can live in for the rest of our lives. All right? So you need to understand that you are living in a place of victory. You are living constantly in every single day. You, if you get this before you leave tomorrow, that I am victorious, you will never, ever lack anything in your life. Nothing will catch you by surprise. Nothing will catch you by surprise. It is in for my. I, I love. I love every session, and the reason why I love every session is because it just keeps on adding on to to one another and God. So let me explain to you how how a camp works in the way I see it. You come to this camp, and you come with your black canvas. You come with your black canvas. Let's say your canvas was painted with Worcestershire, all right? Let's say your canvas was painted with that. Dan gebeur daar iets op die kamp waar die Heilige Geest beplan hierdie sekere goed en op a, it's actually such a nice way and such a fine detailed way that this canvas suddenly changes color. This canvas goes from, from that dark color of, of Worcester sauce into Starts in an that cleanses you, and you suddenly find purpose. You find you find sense of direction, and that's what happens. And then, as your camp starts going on, and you start allowing the Holy Spirit to come and move in your life and move in your heart, then suddenly everybody's colors start coming together. That's how I see this thing coming together. At the end of this camp, that portrait that's painted right here in this camp, that portrait is only made for this camp. So there's no other there's no other color that you can bring to that portrait for the you'll bring a different color to the next camp. And then God paints a picture for for you and, and, and your destiny as you leave this camp tomorrow. But I want you to understand that because we serve an active and living God, a God that says, I died and rose again to be in relationship with you. That is the God that I want you to encounter every single day when you leave here. You can, you can from today, and it's in part from it all gister aand al gehoor, um, jy let, jy let, jy let was dalk, uh, jy let dalk gaan slaap, en partij van het al drome gehad. Partij van het gister aand gedroom, without even realizing God spoke to in your dreams last night. Some of you God, some of you God spoke to in, in, in Isaac's se- session when he spoke about, about, Maybe you have to broaden your capacity and, and, and make your emmer groter, all right? Maybe that's what you're going to do. But God wants to speak directly to your heart and directly to, to what you are doing. So um, I, was, I told the team that when, when, I, was, when I was preparing for, for today, I said, guys, this is all our experience that God wanted to do. God wants to just come and speak to each person individually and want you to hear his voice for who he is. We, I would much rather have God speak to me than anyone else in this room. I would much rather before, I love these people in the blue shirts. I love them. But much rather I would have God speak to me than them. Because the difference maker. He's the one who can speak directly into my life and change the course of my future forever. God will use, God will use these guys in, in an amazing way, and, and you'll see it in the next session with Harvest, which Therese is going to do. But what I want you to hear this morning is that you can hear God's voice for yourself. And when you start doing that, the Bible says in 
Psalm 37 verse 4, one of my favorite scriptures, says that delight yourselves in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, when you go and delight yourself in, you guys, <laughs> Chanel always ref makes reference to the chocolate cake um, sermon message that I, the lesson that I a couple, I don't know when it was, but anyway, um, and we had some chocolate cake last night with the leaders. But the Bible says that when you, when you delight yourself, you, you all in. I don't know if you always, you guys are maybe too young to know that movie, uh, Matilda. Yeah. All right, you guys know Matilda? Yeah. All right. Mrs. D, Mrs. I, Mrs. F, F, I, Mrs. C, Mrs. G, Mrs. L. That, that means they spell difficulty, something like that. Um, and what's the, what's the principal's name? Yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mrs. Trenchable. Hey, I like, I like the old ones in the back. Like, yeah, we know the one. The one with the carrot flying in the room. All right. But there's, I don't remember that scene where the little boy is on the stage eating that chocolate cake. All right. Now, now, to delight yourself in the Lord, that cake will eventually make him full. Eventually, he was there like, he was burping and he was pooping and it was crazy. All right. And you, I, I've only made any. But when you delight yourself in Christ and you just want more and more and more and more, and you can't, you can't get enough of it, all right? Because, and then, you know what happens after that? Then it give you, gives you the desires of your heart. That's, that's the response to delighting yourself in God. And I want to encourage you, if, it, if delighting yourself in Christ looks like getting to a place of prayer, um, get yourself a, a, a prayer room at home, get yourself a put, put aside time, um, one of the practical ways to do it, to start off that, is to just set an alarm and say, every time this alarm goes off, I'll spend time with God. If, if that's a small way to start, and you will see as you do that, you're going to want to do it more and more and more. So the main focus for today and the main reason why I'm, I want to pray for us quickly before we start, um, so you can, let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for for every camper. Thank you for your anointing on our ears, and thank you for opening up hearts. Thank you that we can, we can hear what you want to tell us, and what you want to say about us, and who you say we are. Father, you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, and we will live in that light forever, because you will come and show us exactly what you think and what you say about us. In Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Amen. God constantly speaks to you. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a very cool scripture. One of my favorite guys in the Bible besides Jesus. All right? Somebody caught me out one day and said, Who's your favorite character in the Bible? I was like, Ah. I had to go think. I was like, And then I said, I said this guy. And they're like, Ah, oh, what about Jesus? I'm like, Ah, Jesus is not a character. Jesus, Jesus is real. And, uh, but they caught me out, they caught me out, and I got them back, and I gave them some truth and said, hey, he's not a character, he's more than that, he's real. But anyway, this other guy in the Bible is also pretty cool. Uh, he goes by the name of Elijah. All right, all right. Elijah, is that how it is in Afrikaans? Yeah. Guys, I've got this Afrikaans anointing on me, this camp, it's crazy. All right. Anyway, so Elijah has this, has this crazy... Um, encounter where where he sees amazing stuff elijah he, he defeats the prophets of baal um like just by standing there and these people are cutting themselves it's a crazy story i was going to read it the bible so epic and he see he, he sees he sees he declares that it's not going to rain for long and then skillok say okay fine king ahab i think it he says now it's going to rain and then it rains so he, he does like crazy stuff in the Bible, and he sees God do amazing stuff. And then, out of nowhere, there's just this one spirit that starts tormenting him. And Elijah goes into this massive place of depression and anxiety. All right? That, this is how far, that, this, this, this stuff that you're facing, this is how far back it goes. And Elijah says, Elijah... He, he runs and he goes hides in a cave and the Bible goes and puts his head down and he, and he says, Lord, take me now. I'm ready to come home. You can take me. I'm tired. 
And to a degree, I, if I read that, it's probably a suicidal note that he's writing down there. He's saying, I'm done. And then the cool thing happens. When the Lord spoke to him, angel of the Lord appeared to him. And, and then the Bible says that he wasn't in the lightning or the thunder or all the big stuff. The Bible says that, that, that God spoke to him in a small, still voice. And it said to him, go get up, eat your bread, go, you have a job to do. And I'm telling you now, God has been speaking to you every single day. And sometimes the Holy Spirit comes and he comes and moves and he wants to come and reveal stuff to you. And I think the reason why we ignore those things is because it's sometimes uncomfortable. It's sometimes things that we don't want to hear. And he's not telling it to us because he's trying to condemn us or try to reveal, look how bad we are. He's trying to talk to us and say, hey, I love you. Let me deal with that area of your life. I love you. I want to come in. I, wanna, I want you to come in. Get into a deeper relationship with me, but what you're doing there is not good for you. What you're doing there is going to cause more harm than good. And so today, I want to amplify God's voice in your life, and I want to challenge you on certain things um, going forward. I want to tell you a bit of a story, a um, very recent one, and, and a story. We're still, a journey. We're still going on a journey um, with myself my wife. We've been married for... Four and a half years now, going on five years, I think. Yeah, we're going on five years. And what happened was a couple of, when I knew this was, I knew, we, we knew what God had in store for us prior to getting married. So to give you, to give you an indication, my wife has quite an uh, extensive medical issue um, with, with epilepsy and a pacemaker and all the things. And we believe in, we still keep on holding on to God, believing for a miracle, and we'll keep on doing that. Because I'm, I'm not moved by that. Because I know God has called her to complete healing. That's just temporary. And one of the things that God laid on our hearts, and it's something that, and we, we really want kids, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting God that we will still have the kids of our own, but last year, December, we, we decided as a, as a, as a a couple, we spoke to, never even spoke to our parents. We just spoke to one or two friends that speak into our lives. And I said to, I said to my wife, um, okay, fine. Um, what, what do you, how do you feel about adoption? That's where we were sort of chatting and, and going forward. And, and, and then we felt, we felt peace with it. We felt, we felt like it's a part of our lives that God wanted us to partake in. And so... We did this. We did that. And that happened December last year. We sort of just discussed. Early in this year, we decided we're going to start putting the process together. So we got in contact with a couple of friends who we know have adopted before. And they gave us contact numbers of, of social development and child welfare and all that. And it's been an amazing uh, process. Now, very cool. I think I... We, came here Friday. I don't know when I told the group. I think I told the group about a week before we got here. Uh, and I said to the guys at the back there on our little WhatsApp group, I said, hey guys. So I told, actually what I told them was like three months ago, by the way, please trust with us. We are busy adopting. We're busy in the process of adoption. But it's a long process. You have to get approved and you have to do this and you have to do that. And so we decided by faith, without us even getting approved, in September, we just went to go and buy our mother-in-law. My mother-in-law bears us with a cot, a nice little baby, like a cot that turns into a bed. Uh, I don't know. This, uh, I just said to her, what color are we getting? Because we don't know if we do get a child, we're getting a boy or girl. It doesn't really matter. Um, we, we, we just, we just want to be a blessing and be blessed. And so, long as we buy a cot and we made the room. So, what? was Clarence them said they were getting baby. We decided, okay, fine. We're going to declare we're adopting. Uh, Donny and them said they're pregnant. The Indian and them said they... It was just crazy. Everybody was just getting babies. All right? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so we then decided, okay, fine. By faith, we're going to put this room together and we're going to see where this ends up. And we did just that. And last week, we got approved for adoption. All right? All right? 
Awesome. What's it, Chum? Mark so, Mark so, Chum. All right. And, uh, and so we hope maybe early next year, before the camp, we might have a little one. I'll bring it to the camp. But this is what I want to share with you. So, and I, I told Chanel this this morning. So there's a certain identity that that child has been born into prior to coming into our life. The Bible says that we've been adopted sons and daughters of Christ. I think that's in, I don't even know what scripture that is, but I know it's a scripture. All right. And, the, and so what this means is that you have a certain way of living and a certain identity that is, that is attached to you prior to you being adopted into Christ. And you have a choice to follow what God says who you are before or after accepting Christ as your Savior. Want jou identiteit is nie wat jy gedoen het nie en nie wie jy nou is nie. What you did and what happened to you is not who you are. You are who God says you are. All right? So, can we go to that first slide, please? And I really want to encourage you. So, I want to start by saying God has no fault in His design. You've been designed for a massive, deep relationship with Christ. But most important, you've been designed to have joy, to have peace, to have to know who, what, what you want to do in life. You've been designed for greatness. You've been designed for, for health, wealth, wisdom. Everything that God has for you is, is good. That's what you've been designed for. God does not make any mistakes in His design. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. And so we see this in, in the world today where all of a sudden there's questions popping up about, okay, fine. Uh, what what side of what side of the gender spectrum are you on? Where are you? This and that. That means if you're telling me that's a problem, you're telling me that God has a fault. With you. you have a fault with God's design. I'm telling you now. The Bible says this: that you've been fearfully and wonderfully made in the hands of God. You, there's no way the enemy is going to come and distort what God has designed to be perfect in His eyes. Now, the problem is what happens to you constantly, and Chanel dealt with this last night, is that there's certain things that wants to steal that power of you. The greatest power that you can have is know you are in Him. If you know that, that whole thing of it, you will receive might and power. And the, I'm not going to do the whole, all right, that sounds like Demi Demi. You know Demi Demi. <laughs> tough times don't last. Tough times never last. Only tough people last. Right, you guys will... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. All right, so God has no fault in his design. Now, things happen, and life happens, and hurt people hurt people. It's, it's what you've learned. It's what you, what's happening. And it's most of the time, the reason why that happens is because if I'm hurting someone, it's because I probably don't know who I am. And I don't know where I fit in. You know, as much as you are, let's say your mother is Magrit, as much as you are Magrit's daughter or Magrit's son, you are first child of God of before that. That's secondary. I'm Charles Peterson's son. I love my dad. I love my mom. I'm being blessed that, that, that God has been blessed me with two amazing parents. But my main role in life is for me to walk in my identity and what Christ has for me. And that's in my relationship with Him. After that, I'm still a child of my parents. That's my secondary role. But there is secret good that happens and secret lies that you can fast on. And the reason why you constantly go back to those lies is because we don't hold on to truth. I will hear that the truth for you now is that you fast on that as wat jy net anhou aan die leensvat, dat jy nie goed genoeg is nie. Dat jy nie is wie God sê jy is nie. That you, that you believe the lie of, it's okay to have anxiety, it's okay to have depression, it's okay to think of suicide, it's okay to think that, that I can bear somebody with integrity, it's okay to live a life with no character, it's okay to live a life of, with, with, with no pure intentions. That's not okay. That's not okay, because it's not who God's called you to be. It's not a God's call to be. Next slide, please. So, 
I want to, I want to, this is what happens, because um, this is how we get to this point, and I want to just stop in the first line there. This is how we end up where we end up currently. So most of us, where we end up in our lives is because of this model that we're trying to fit into. This is Romans 12. It says, stop, uh, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. Daar is sekere, daar is sekere goed wat om jou gebeur. Dis makkelijker om nie te sê, ok, fine, let me just go with the flow, because that's what the majority is doing. And it's not good for you. Daai, daai kultuur, daai kultuur van, daai is een kultuur van, of uh, uh, mensen, so it's a, it's, a, it's a slave mentality that comes upon you because it's people that are slave to pornography, people that are slave to addictions, people that are slave to, to way, bad ways of living, the ways that aren't bringing life. If it doesn't bring life to you, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Okay? If you can change the certain lifestyle choices that you've made up until this point today, Jy kan vandag sluit, besluit net, net om te hoor, ter wie God sê is. I promise you, if you want to put those drugs down, the alcohol down, the, the, the vapes down, everything down, you can do it today by under hearing what God says about you. Because when, when you understand and hear that this is what God says about you, you won't compromise on who you are anymore. All of these things, stop him with ideals and opinions. The reason why we do this is because we compromise because we don't know who we are. We don't know who we are. So we compromise constantly, and we try to make up space, all right? And, and, and the, the image that I'm getting is you try to fill yourself in succession. You try to fill yourself with these things, but you have so much holes that nothing's going to stay in because it's, you actually become more empty the more you try to add these things, pornography and and drugs and this and that the other and so what ends up happening is you actually move further away from who you are from who God has called you to be it is not I'm I'm telling you now I will not I don't want you to walk away without hearing who God says you are I don't want to walk away from 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 this knowingly telling you that you can be transformed today just by changing the way you think, changing what you believe about yourself. Because some of you forgave people that hurt you yesterday. Some of you forgave yourself, but you still woke up this morning thinking you're not enough. You still woke up this morning thinking, yes, I'm sure some of you, yes, het gisteravond eindelijk gewerk. Ek het al in die sessie gesit een paar keer. Ek het al van hierdie gehoor. So, so, hoekom moet ek het doen? Because everything is just a repeat. It's a cycle that keeps coming back. And it's built down to, do you believe the lie of who you are? Or do you believe the truth about who God says you are? About who God says you are. I want to put that question on the board, my leaders. We can come back to the scripture now. Um, and so, if you've had this question before, who does God say I am? At some point or another, we've all asked this question before. Chad, who does God say I am? What does God think about me? There's people that, the reason why your parents are where they are, some of us, broken, lost, who's done, who's done things to you not to keep you safe, who's done things to, to, to lose your trust. The reason why that happens is because they don't know who they are. They sit in a position where, where they need to parent, they need to raise a child, but yet they don't even know who they are as, as, a, as an individual. And dalk it jy ergens in your leven, hierdie vrou, dalk vrou nog steeds, wie is ek? Who does, who does God say I am? And so, we're going we're to get to that now. This is what I want to tell you, what I want to encourage you with. We're going to do something practical. One of the things that, that is our main focus for a day like today, you honored him as, as, as we started the session, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can come and change your life in an instant, just by one touch, just by 
filling you with who he is. And suddenly the lies of, of the enemy of saying, fine, where do I fit on? Am I gay? Am I not? Am I lesbian? Am I straight? Do I like? Do I do this? Do I do that? Do I? Is my identity found in porn? Am I identity found in that? Am I identity found in friends? Am I identity found in that? All of those things. Those lies will be left behind if you allow the Holy Spirit to come and fill your life. If you allow the Holy Spirit to say, I, I don't, I don't want to be confused anymore. Confusion is not of God. It's not. Because even when I don't know what's happening next, and you guys seen it's crazy. It's, I got enough faith to know that God will still take care of my next step. So look what happens when the Holy Spirit comes, when you allow those to come into your life. The previous verse, Romans 12, it says, But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. That's what you need an inward encounter with the Holy Spirit so that you can be transformed by the way you think about yourself, by the way you think of who you are, by the way you think of what you do. That's, I promise you, that will change your life. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect. God's will for our lives is that we might walk in the identity that He has for us. That we might walk in who He says we are. All right, please go to the next verse. <clears throat> so, here's, here's, what he's, here, here's the tip. Here's the tip that, that, that the Bible gives us. This is the tip of truth. It says, stop conforming yourself or stop, uh, what is that first verse in, 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 in Romans 12? Um, it says, go to back to the first. It says, stop it. The ideals of the opinion. She says, What you've been doing this time doesn't work. You try to fit in, you try to find ways, maybe you cut yourself, whatever you're doing, those ways don't work anymore. Yes, yes, here's what you need to do instead. Here's what you need to do instead. She says, Instead, honestly, assess your worth by your God given faith as a standard of measurement. And then you will see your true value with an appropriate self-esteem. I don't know if we, do we still have that ruler. That would be cool if we still have it. Is it gedoen op the kids camp? Oh yes, awesome. Thank you. Is I get so groot lineal, kan het gebruik. So is I did a lesson on. You rock, you rule. Uh, uh, light it. He's on with the rods. He loop. He's on me swim, but then track. The light it was much, but it was an amazing. It was an amazing uh, message behind what it did. But yes, yes, what the Bible tells us about how you have to measure. How what what's the best way to measure your worth? This this year this this measurement year is your God given faith. That what God's place before, and that God-given faith is only built on truth. That God-given faith. See, instead, assess, assess your worth. Assess your worth. Go and look and say, actually, uh, what what am I worth? What? Okay, that's a good way. But where do I start? Uh, by using your God-given faith to as the standard of measurement, as the standard of measurement, and you will see your true, and that's important. All right, so put your hand in your chest quickly, and I want you to repeat after me. Say, I want my true value. All right, there's a lot of times um, you always hear uh, these guys, and you've heard uh, there's, there's a real value and there's a true value. I don't know, like the mathematicians always speak about that, and, and there's certain things, but there's a true value to what you receive today by just hearing and following the voice of God. Now, there's certain ways to to get encountered with the Holy Spirit's voice and, and, and hear what the Holy Spirit's saying. And, and we'll get there as you're going. I believe that supernaturally God will come and speak to each of you individually today. But I want to know for the longest part, some of you sitting here saying, I haven't, 
ever measured my true value well enough. Because Chad, I woke up this morning still feeling like I'm not valuable in the eyes of God. And I want to encourage you. Can I, do you, can I ask uh, that you stand up, ma'am? Awesome. What's your name? Bar? Bar? Barnett. Did I say it? Awesome. Who else is Barnett? Let's say. 15. Yeah. 15. Is your sister camp? No, not there. There camp. Okay. And say for my, say for my, from where come you? Pretoria. Pretoria. Awesome. Barnett, please go to the stage for me. Is it okay? Is that okay? Can I can I ask you to go to the stage? You don't want to go to the stage? Are you sure? All right, that's okay. You can sit. It's okay. It's okay. Awesome. Can you? Can, what's your name, ma'am? What's your name? Tiana. Yeah, we spoke yesterday. You can take your cape off. There we go. Awesome. Are you okay to come to the stage? I like that. All right. Nothing wrong, Bernard. It's okay. Please come to the stage. Here, like on a club. You can go to the stage. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Oh, Springbok. Yeah, it's you, dude. It's you, dude. Please come to the stage, legend. Thank you so much. Give him a hand. What's your name? Renir. Thanks, Renir. You can go to the stage. Awesome. So, that's sicker good what what gebeur wa, wanneer ons waarheid hoor. Wanneer ek en jy waarheid begin hoor, is daar seker goed wat in ons leven verander. Maar per ty keer kan ons nie die waarheid spreek oor ons self nie. Alright? Um, so, what I, let me to, to come to the front please, and Veronica, I want you to come to the front as well. En ek wil hee, jylle moet op die stage, jylle is, dit is jou groepie, dit is, is groepie leid nie. Awesome. Awesome. You can come to the stage, ma'am. You can come around that way. Cool. And Akvale Hrupilais, you can grab the mirror. Okay, and you're gonna to show it towards your your camper. Awesome. Let's hold it like this. Very cool. Awesome. Daar is seker goed, en ek dink Chanel het bykie so hier sê aangeraak gister aand. Um, and so, I want, I want to encourage, I want to talk to Diane, is that right? Diane and Renier. Alright, so Diane, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you by looking, in, I want you to look at the mirror, not at me, you're looking at yourself, alright? What, what what do you see, Diane? Dat ek genoeg is. Dat jy genoeg is. Sê vir my, sê vir my net daar weer staan, wat sê God vir jou? Dat ek enig iets kan doen, en dat ek dier liefde vir mense kan wees, dat hulle genoeg is, en dat hulle uniek is. Maak jy saak hoe hulle lyk nie. Kijk vir die speel. Maak jy saak hoe hulle lyk nie. Um, elke mensie het een goeie hart, elke mens het een plek waar hulle kan wees, en dat maak jy saak waar hulle is nie, die Heerse liefde is oorvloeiend. So, so, geef al aan een klap. Renier, ek wil hier jy met jyself in die speel kyk, en sê vir my, wat sien jy? Genoeg. Wat hoor jy, wat sê God vir jou by die oomblik? Dat ek is genoeg. Awesome. Dat ek kort meer nie dat my droom uitgele. Awesome, awesome. Geef vir een hier een lekker hande klap. Okay. Lemiel, ek wil jy met, jy met vir hier sê, wat sien jy? Ek sien a wisdom warrior. Wisdom warrior. So, the gift of wisdom is in jou leven. En die Heere, die Heere gaan dit laat groei. En jy gaan voel, want jy is toch nie gewoond om die Heerese stem te hoor so gereeld nie, maar 
die Heere wil begin meer met jou praat, en weisheid in jou leven inbring, en so dat jy die weisheid vir ander mense kan deel. En a warrior in die sense van, jy is a fighter. Jy is a fighter, maar jy is nie net enige fighter nie. Jy is a victorious fighter. Maar jy fight nie met jou hande nie, jy fight nie met jou bede nie, jy fight nie. Uh, kyk, hy doen MMA, so, dis nie, dis nie wat ek bedoel nie. Jy, jy is a fighter through wisdom. You're rooted in truth. Lies cannot touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Lies cannot affect you. The wisdom of God is in your life. Awesome. So, what will I now even do is, I will let you for the spiel kijk. It's my pretty fun to your face, Lamil. It doesn't see your face. But it put the spiel in front of your face. Yeah, I'll say. Like a opera. There we go. I live. All right. So, Actually, I must for his spiel say, I am a warrior. I am a warrior. I have wisdom. I have wisdom. And I will fight. And I will fight. Awesome. Give her a little like on a clap. Veronica, what sing you? Okay, so Diana is Axie in Liefde. To jy gekom het, die Heer my liefde gewaas vir jou. En hy het vir my gewaas hoe jy dier kunste mense gaan verander. Jy gaan jou kunste gebruik, jy gaan a boek skryf, jy gaan, jy gaan worship. Ek sien worship in jou leven. En jy gaan so ander mense so nader aan ombring dier jou geloof, dier hoe courageous jy is en hoe sterk jou geloof is in die Heere, en hoeveel jou om vertrouw, so ek sien jou op jou knieën, jou battles vaag, jy vaag baie battles, op hier oomlik, en die Heere sê, hy sien jou, hy sê, hy is daar, hy sê, hy is my kind, ek is nie stil nie, ek is hier, so ek is met jou, en jy moet net op my vertrouw, jy moet net by my praat, hy wil hee, jy moet waarwele vir hom gooi, En ja, ek sien liefde. Liefde vir die Heere, liefde vir mense, liefde vir jyself. En jy moet net besef dat jy is genoeg. Jy is genoeg en hy sien dit. En jy gaan dit besef. Awesome, geef vir aan een klap. Diana, ek wil hier met vir jyself in die oor kyk. And I want you to tell yourself... I am enough. I am enough. I'm a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. I'm creative. I'm creative. Because of the Holy Spirit's power in my life. Because the Holy Spirit is all in my life. I am. I am. Who he says I am. I am who he says I am. I want you to look at I want you to look yourself in the eyes and say that God loves you. Look yourself in your eyes and say God loves you, DNA. God loves you, DNA. Awesome. Give a like a clap. I say yellow cock and sit. Awesome. Thank you, Jelle. Bang for Dio. Da where you now sit, can God direct met you prod. Net as what I will. Net up same manner. All we have to do is lean in and say, I'm going to use this God-given faith to measure my worth. Alright, nog een skrif en dan soos, en dan is nog twee skrifte of een, ek kan nie nou nie. Alright. I love the scripture. <laughs> you saw who you created me before, hey, you saw who you created me to be became me. So he saw you to be who you are, not now, not not what you've been through. He, he sees, <laughs> I remember I did a, a lesson by a year terug, a card of the middle, one of my favorite, one of my favorite lessons of all time that I did here. And there was a certain thing of, there's a scripture that says that there's, he plans, he stands, he sees the beginning from the end and he stands there and he sees you, how, you, how, how 
he, how you don't see me, how you don't see yourself yet, but he sees a complete you. He sees a overflowing you. He sees a set free you. He sees a joyful you. He sees a peaceful you. Now, you're not, you're not experiencing all of those things right now. Because a lot of the time, you're seeking happiness and he wants joy for you. You're seeking instant gratification and not long-term overflowing joy that just keeps on coming. How can you have joy? How can, how can Chanel be okay for if her dad passes away, but yet she's still joyful in, in, in what happened? Because she knows that, that there's an unspeakable and supernatural joy that's upon her life. I can't have joy with my current situation at home. Yes, it's, um, we're so excited to adopt. And we're so excited to, to, to change this, to, to be able to speak life and form a new godly identity for this child that we will get. Because this child has been through so much before. I mean, before we even get it, this child's been abandoned. So we're going to get this child, but I have an opportunity to recognize what God's placed in them. And because I do that, I can now speak life and speak into this young person's identity and say, we are willing to show you what truth looks like. We're willing to break down every barriers of, of what comes with this package because that is not who you are. You are not abandoned. But I can only do that in the midst of knowing my true worth and knowing what God says about me. How can I do it if I don't even know, if I want to speak life over this person, if I don't even know who I am? I can only speak from a place that I know. Right, my last scripture. Is there one more? Oh, there's no more. All right, that's okay. All right. I want to encourage you today, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow an opportunity. And if you have, if you have paper, whatever, it's going to help. But I just want you to write down certain things as we go. So I'm going to allow everyone to close their eyes right there where we're sitting. You can leave the lights on. And I want the Holy Spirit to come and minister to you right there where you're sitting. God, come and show them who they are. show them their worth come and show them how much you love them we don't want to hear it from anybody else but you in your heart full of secret good but but you don't know if your heart lay and, and chat I don't even know what that feels like I've just accepted Christ to be <laughs> I just accepted Jesus this week so I don't even know what it is like to engage with, with with God's voice that which you're hearing now that's what I want you to write down if you have a pen you can write it down right now if you have a pen and paper I want you to write those things down that what who God says you are who God says you are don't believe the lies. Your pain is not who you are. Your past is not who you are. In Christ, you are a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. Ek wil eerst met gauw iets bolds doen. Ek gaan net twee goed oor. And the first thing I want to pray for is addiction. God says it's not part of His plan for your life. It's not part of His, His will for your life. 
That is not who you are. If you want to give up smoking, you want to give up whatever bad things you're doing, pornography, addiction from uh, just from self-affliction, self-pain, I want, I want you to stand. And you must have this to stand because it's not something you have to be shamed about. You can stand to your feet if you're saying, Chad, I just, I just, I just, I don't want to do this no more. Thank you. Thank you so much. Daar is sekere goed wat dier Godse stem kan wegval in 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 een moment. Just by God saying, that is not who you are. You are not, you are not your addiction. No one's judging you for standing up. Because this is a moment between you and God. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I thank you that every person that's standing up that says that I want to sit with this addiction no longer. Father, by your word, they will experience freedom right now. Chains broken in Jesus' name. Father, you paid a price on the cross for this as well. This addiction will not form part of the relationship with you. <laughs> that this addiction will not wedge who they are in your eyes, Father. Every bit of guilt that comes with this is gone in Jesus' name. <laughs> God says, I've never, I've never ever judged you. Some of you need to hear this now. God said, I never judged you. You couldn't hide it away from me. All I wanted you is to come to me just as what you're doing right now. I want to embrace you as a father. I want to show you how much I love you. You didn't be asked for my good after break in Jesus' name. If you have the courage to pray with me, I want you to pray this after me. Say, Lord, I give you this. I give you my life. I give you this addiction in Jesus' name. Amen. You look and sit. I'll say, say, last one and then we're done. And, 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 and I'm, and thank you so much for doing that. I don't think you realize what that does for your future. It is not about, it's about safeguarding a generation. That's what we're doing. There's a generation here that's, this is the one word that I heard when, I, when you guys walked into this, into this hall on Monday evening was, I will keep you safe. The Lord says he will keep you safe. The for you full me veilig for us, and you say, actually, you're veilig I want to pray, I want to pray, and, and I'm not going to expose anyone, but I'm, I want you just to close your eyes. I'm not going to ask anyone to stand. And there's one, there's not a lot of people, so I'm not going to call anyone out. But I want to pray specifically for confusion. Confusion of gender, confusion of, of am, I, am I attracted to this gender, that gender? What, what am I doing? Where, 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 do I, where do I find peace with that? Is that who I am? Because my friends tell me. So I'm created to be. I don't want nobody looking around now. So Father, where there's, where there's people that is struggling with their sexuality, struggling with who they are, because the enemy has come to distort who you designed them to be, Lord. That is not who they are. And Father, deeply they know that. I want you to come and reveal yourself to them, Lord. Come and challenge every area which they trying to hide from you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and minister in their heart this morning. God says that He doesn't resent you. He never will. He doesn't resent you for what you think about yourself. But know that there is no fault God says there's no fault in my design. There's no fault in my design. You are perfect in my eyes. 
every lie that has brought you up until this point is broken in the name of Jesus. Is broken by the blood of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that they might declare freedom over this battle that they're fighting in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give Jesus a lack of clap. Awesome. Ons gaan klein groepies toe tot die klokkie lei, en dan gaan ons so een klein bykie aftijd wees. So dra die klokkie lei na klein groepie, wil ek net sê, maak jy nie te ver gaan nie, want het gaan een baie kort tijd wees, dan kom ons terug saal toe, want ons het, ons moet gaan gaan met die program. Awesome. Jy lik een klein groepie toe gaan, jy is amazing.